Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World. More specifically, we're going to be talking about shit. I'm sorry. I mean, we're going to be talking about fertilizer and how you can maximize your gains when it comes to the Botanical Research Center, which is essentially the farm in previous Moss Honor games. And I know that there might be some of you out there that actually don't know what the Botanical Research Center does. So I'm going to go over it just a little bit to give you guys um, an idea. So here's the thing. You can use this particular uh, facility in um, Astera to grow you certain materials that can be used to create consumables and ammunition. So if you to cultivate and say for instance you want to get yourself some more potions because you don't want to actually spend money on potions you can grow some herbs so you can select herbs you can put them on any of these particular slots that i have right here and um by doing that in between quests our chief botanist over here is going to be growing herbs for you which you can then use to craft potions or say you want mega potions well then you can just grow some honey on a different slot so you can be growing these simultaneously herbs and honey and you can get yourself potions and mega potions without necessarily needing to spend money on your potions okay uh, obviously you can do a lot more with that particularly for gunners this is going to be very important because you can grow your own uh, ammunition out of this uh, and there's plenty of more uses like you can grow flash bugs to do flash bombs so it's very useful to uh, make use of the botanical research center to generate resources for you okay so the thing we're going to be talking about most today though are going to be the fertilizer because i feel that the cultivate portion of it is pretty simple you just you put a product in there it's going to be multiplied every time that you do a quest so you know we're going to be talking about fertilizers so very important i believe that i have all of the fertilizers at this point i'm hunter rank 70 i don't know if they're going to add new stuff for you at hunter rank 100 i do know that a lot of stuff happens after hunter rank 100 i personally haven't gotten there yet but we got all of these fertilizers at our disposal we also have three slots as you guys can see and in the harvest box we have the, the harvest box we have 30 slots to accommodate all of the stuff that is coming out of this um, harvest. If you guys are like, oh my God, Rurikan, you have more slots than I do, or you have more fertilizers than I do, or more space in your harvest box, I'll be telling you guys um, how I think you can get that stuff because that information is still a little bit murky at the moment, but I will tell you guys the things that I know about that, but right now we're gonna be focusing on the fertilizer aspect. So essentially, if you have all the fertilizers like I do, how would you like to be able to get all of those fertilizers active at exactly the same time because it is actually cheaper to maintain them all active than to manually do them one by one whenever you need a specific thing. If you guys look to the bottom right hand side, you will notice that I have all the fertilizer effects uh, up right now. We have bug honey harvest, we have fungi harvest, we have plant harvest. What this means is essentially anything that i put in there for him to cultivate is going to generate the maximum amount of materials that it can and is going to be generating them as fast as it can because we also have growth up large so in order to go ahead and do what i have done right here uh, and get every single fertilizer effect up at the same time you're gonna have to make sure that you've unlocked soft soil if you look at this soft soil it basically says here this soil extends the duration of current fertilizer effects and it is going to last you for five quests so once you're able to successfully apply them all simultaneously all you have to do is maintain the soft soil. If you can just maintain, like check this, every three or four quests to make sure that everything is still going according to plan, you're gonna be fine and you're gonna have all of these effects simultaneously. So first, you're gonna start with the mega fertilizer. And as you can see right there, it is going to tell you this lasts you for four quests. So you, you put the mega fertilizer in and then you go and you do a quest and you come back. The mega fertilizer is still gonna be active for three more quests. At that point, you're going to add the choice mushroom substrate, okay? and you're going to be golden, and then you're going to do another quest, and then you're going to come back. And once you come back, the Mega Fertilizer should still be active for two more quests, and you're going to go ahead and apply the Thick Summoner Jelly, okay? And once you apply the Thick Summoner Jelly, once again, you go back, you do another quest, you come back here. Once you come back here, you're now thinking, okay, so now I apply the Ancient Catalyst. No, because if you apply the Ancient Catalyst, the Mega Fertilizer is going to run out because this is its last quest. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to apply Soft Soil and extend everything for five more quests to make sure that you don't lose your Mega Fertilizer, okay? Then you go do another quest and you come back and then you add the Ancient Catalyst. Once you add the Ancient Catalyst, you're going to have all four things active at the same time. 
because you've already extended the duration of all the other fertilizers already so everything should be active at this point you then get your ancient catalyst and you're good to go after that you make a couple of quests and every now and then you just come back and you add the soft soil and all of these will be active all the time and if you're like me you're constantly producing something because you're always going to be needing something even if it's flash bugs for flash pods or um maybe you're producing some potions or maybe you're producing stuff to get mega nutrients so that you can produce max life pushes there's tons of stuff for you to produce maybe you're uh, a bow gun user and you're producing ammunition uh stuff Stuff. so just keep these things active because then you can put whatever you want in there and like i said it becomes cheaper than manually adding ancient catalyst and thick summoner jelly every single quest so keep that in mind um this is like in my opinion the best way for you to handle your farm and then just like fertilize whatever you want and now you guys are wondering okay so rurikan i've heard all that but like you said we don't have those fertilizers so you don't have these um all these slots or you don't have as much space in the harvest box okay so here's what you got to do very first thing you're going to want to make sure that you have done all of your optional botanical center quests if you don't know what these quests are i'm going to show them to you now if you go to optional you go to three stars and you go to prickly predicament that's your first one I know, it sucks. It's 20 bobble cactuses. You're going to have to go to the Wild Spire Waste. You're going to have to look for those bobble cactus, and you're going to have to deliver 20 of them. I know, it's a little bit of a boring quest. Do it. It's worth it, okay? You can also identify these quests by looking at the client on the bottom right-hand side. It says Laid Back Botanist, okay? You want to make sure that you do this particular quest. After that, you're going to go to your four stars. You're going to do royal relocation. It's just killing a Rathian, not really a big deal. Once again, laid back botanist. This is going to unlock more stuff for you in the botanical research center. After that, you're going to want to make sure that you've done persistent pests, which is 14 hornitors. Again, who is the client? Chief botanist. It is no longer the laid back botanist. It is the chief botanist. So you've done that quest um you've done all of those quests then you finish on this one and then there is one more quest that you have to go and do which is a seven star quest and that is the talons of ire and ice which involves killing a legiana and an odogaron once again it is a quest to the chief botanist and once you complete this quest it's going to unlock more stuff for you over at the botanical research center but that's not all so these are all of the at least all the quests that i'm aware of for the botanical guys okay but uh, after you get all of those quests and you complete all of those quests, you're going to have to do some deliveries over here to the resource center. Now, these deliveries is not just you delivering items all of a sudden. You have to actually talk with specific characters. So let me show you. The very first one is going to be sprouting an ancient tree. So this is given to you by Forceful Fiverr. Now, this is probably going to be one of the NPCs that is running around. I don't know which one it is. I actually have my UI turned off. Oh, it's actually her, Forceful Fiverr. Uh, so as you um, evolve and do these quests that I've just told you, eventually these guys are going to have like quest markers on top of their head, just like an MMO. Uh, they will show up in the mini map as exclamation marks, or you can even open up, um, you can even open up your map like so, and you'll be able to see if there's any exclamation mark in the map. Uh, so I'll constantly check back as you complete those quests, look for exclamation marks so that you can talk with these people. So these deliveries are, just in case you want to get started on working on getting these materials ahead of time. Uh, these deliveries are sprouting an ancient tree, which is given by Forceful Fiverr, and you're going to need a coral bone. This is obtained in the Coral Highlands, as the name itself says. So once you gather that material, you'll probably get that quest, and then you just have to turn that in. Once you turn that in, you're going to get the catalyst. Then Grow Greenery Grow. This is given to you by the Timid Fiver. You need a Great Jagras Hide Plus. So this is a high rank quest. Once you get that, you're going to get the Mega Fertilizer. Mound of Mushrooms. Kuluyaku Plume Plus. So you're going to need to kill a Kuluyaku, get its plume, and this is going to be given by the Sisterly Fourth. And you're going to get the Choice Mushroom Substract. The Pied Buck Piper. This is given to you by Hot Blooded Fourth. You're going to need a Tzitzi Yaku Photo 4 Plus, and you're going to get the Thick Summoner Jelly. Shatter the Grass Ceiling. This is going to be given to you by Easy Going Fiverr, and you're going to need to get a Great, a great Gyros Hood Plus. And it's going to give you the Ancient Catalyst. The Gentle Earthen Bed. This is going to be given to you by the Laid Back Botanist once you've gotten all of the other materials, and you're going to need to collect three dragon bone relics and your reward is going to be 
the soft soil. Then you have the ones that are going to be the harvest box upgrades. So this is going to be given to you by the laid back botanist. You're going to need two aqua sacks and you're going to get the harvest box upgrade. Then again, laid back botanist. This time around it is a torrent sack and you're going to get another harvest box upgrade. Okay. These are all the quests that you need to do and all the deliveries that you need to do. And once you complete all of these things, you should have all of the uh, slots and all of the things that I have available in the Botanical Center. And you can then maximize your gains, people. Hopefully this helped you guys out getting the most gains out of your Botanical Research Center. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.